Thing. Order! Order! You are an incorrigible delinquent at times. <laughs> Behave yourself, man! Now, it slightly has the air of a concocted media row, the sort of one where a newspaper extracts an angry remark from a shocked parent and an indignant backbench MP or two. But in this case, if it is blown up out of all proportion, it does at least raise an interesting question. The row concerns a transgender-themed BBC video aimed at young children. It's a video diary of an 11-year-old, a fictional 11-year-old, called Amy, who was born Ben. How's this going to work? To my old friends? I'm Amy, who used to be Ben. My worry is that one of the new kids finds out that I'm transgender, makes a big deal of it, tells everybody, and it freaks them all out. All I want to do at my new school is fit in, like all the other new girls, not to be picked on or bullied out of fear or ignorance. Tashi, don't want to go to school, Tomaz. Can we just eat ice cream instead? Mm, let me think for a minute. How about a healthier option? Now, the question is simple. How helpful is it to introduce very young people to the idea of gender fluidity? Some worry it'll simply confuse or plant ideas into children who may be different but not trans. So let's uh, talk about this to Stephanie Davis Arai from Transgender Trend, which is a group of parents who are concerned about the current trend to diagnose gender non-conforming children as transgender. And Susie Green from Mermaids, which is a charity that campaigns for the recognition of gender dysphoria in young people. Thanks for coming in, both of you. Um, Susie, tell us about your daughter's experience. At what age did she broach the subject and say, look, I, I don't want to be a boy, I, I think I'm a girl? Really, I sort of noticed that she didn't fit in with what I expected from a typical little boy from sort of when she was really sort of 18 months to about two and a half, three. Um, but I, to be honest, I just thought I had a very sensitive little boy who would probably go up, grow up to be gay. Um, and it was when she was four and we were sat watching television one day and I don't even know where it came from, but she just said to me, Mummy, I need to tell you something. And I asked her what? And she said to me, Mummy, God's made a mistake and I should have been a girl. Really that young? Four. Yeah. Now, did she ever waver through the years after that? No. No. She was bullied incessantly, she was told by me constantly from when she came out with that first statement to when she completely, you know, reiterated it time and time again that actually it was absolutely fine for boys to like girl things and that didn't mean that she had to be a girl and her, you know, her response to that was no, that's not it. And you, you reject the idea that a young person would be kind of suggested into taking the identity of I, d I don't really don't see that gender have. is that fragile, that you can, you right. can make a, a child conform by just presenting them with the possibility that that's an option. And, and just to finish the story, she has no regrets now. Oh, She's, good Lord, no. Yeah, right. Stephanie, that just sounds like a very straightforward story. Mm -hmm. and, and, and why wouldn't you just accept the child? Well, I don't want to comment on individual no, no, stories, no. I never do, so I want to talk more generally yeah. about what we're teaching children and children at the age of four who can have no idea what you mean by changing gender. And we conflate the terms gender and sex, and actually it's not possible to change from male to female. You know, it, it's, that's a biological impossibility. And what we're you teaching can't children... You can't thing, change no, your, no. you know, and your reproductive system and your you sex culture. You know, but you can express right. yourself. Gender means a socially constructed idea of what boys should behave, you know, how boys should behave and dress and how girls should behave and dress. And um, that, yeah, that's fluid. And we should encourage boys to wear, boys can wear dresses, girls can have cropped hair and like right. gaming. You so what's your point those, then, Stephanie? Because I don't understand what you're... Because what we're teaching children, and the BBC film sort of shows that clearly, is that you can change from boy to girl. We're calling it gender, but we're not being honest with children. And I think when we give children information, which is the BBC's job, we may, need to make sure that information but is accurate. Are you not rejecting the whole idea of transgender no, in saying that? No, but in what way are you not rejecting I'm, it? Because there are lots of what, people who identify no, as the opposite I gender. Am, 
I think we need to have great caution in how we apply this theory to children. Um, in the past we called it transsexual, which I think is a more honest word. What we're doing with children, if we're calling them transgender, the treatment pathway is the same as transsexual. It's cross-sex hormones, not cross-gender hormones. It leads to children being sterilised and on medication for life in order to be their authentic selves. Is that correct? or? Well, no, I think that in terms of the way that um, these young people are assessed, they go through very, very careful assessment before any medical mm. intervention is offered. That's never before puberty has at least begun and, and got through to a certain stage. And the fact is, is that we know that conversion therapy, which is the therapy to try and teach young people to be happy and to accept their birth gender and to live as such, we know it doesn't work. We know it... it, it but look, isn't there, there must be some empirical answer to this question. How many people start down the path that your daughter did and then say it was the wrong thing for me to do? I mean, you, you've experienced it in this area, working for a campaign group. You yeah. must know of... Is it a large we've, number? Or I would very say few? from... We've, we've got over 800 parents on our parents' group yeah. and about 200 young people on our teens group. And? And I would say that with the parents who have children who are who have gender dysphoria, not who are gender non-conforming mm. or do cross-gender play or whatever, that's something entirely right. the different. The ones who seem more serious about it. The ones who say, yeah. this is not me. How many regret it? I've probably seen about six. Is that... The, the figure from all the studies and meta-studies is around 80%. 80? And 80. No, th eight, that's uh, based... They can't, they yeah, can't that, be that different. That's from old studies, that is and from, that's based on data that, that includes gender. That is a meta-study of all the studies, and some of them do include, as you say, gender non-conforming children. But okay. the fact is that we don't know which children will desist and which will persist. Even the most extreme but cases we know will that desist. We, we know also that know... Sorry, let, excuse me. We do know that with very careful, um, very careful treatment schedules, we know that with very careful assessment and very careful blocking medication to pause puberty, and that is completely reversible, that young people who go through that come out and they are better socially functioning, less depression, anxiety, and we know that they have far better outcomes right. going into their adult lives. We have no long-term research or clinical the studies to show no no long-term outcomes. They're dealing with young people treatment. who are in their twenties and thirties. We 30s. don't know what effects. We need effects. to leave it here, but actually, these are these are factual questions to which mm. there should be answers. No, which we'll it's not an evidence-based treatment for children. We, we, we have we, no we have evidence. To leave it there. Thank you both very much indeed. Thank you.